Hello, I'm Stuart Rosenthal, publisher of the Beacon Newspapers, and I'm here today with Nathan Fearer from Megillah. Yes. So glad to have you here, and I'd like you to tell us something about what Megillah and the website do. Thanks for having me, Stuart. Um, Megillah is an online video storytelling platform. It's basically a website built for specifically for older adults to easily tell their stories and build their legacy online with short video. So when you say short video, you mean how long? Each video, each video is a maximum of three minutes. Some of the reasons for that are I lead storytelling sessions in senior communities. I've been doing it for a few years. We've learned that brevity helps with narrative structure, so it helps people internally structure the beginning, middle, and end. Nobody talks too long. Um, and also with the short videos, it increases, it, in, it exponentially increases the probability that if a grandparent creates a video and they email it to a grandchild or a parent or a friend, somebody will watch a short video. You can insert a fact, cynical fact here about a, you know the globe's short, uh, shrinking attention span, basically. But short videos help. So again, walk us through it. Someone takes this website and they must have some kind of a cam on their on their computer, or laptop, or something. They record a three-minute video, and then what happens? Um, yes. So the way it works is you log onto the website. You, there's a library of about 750 questions in multiple categories, from family to travel, hobbies, religion and spirituality. Uh, we're adding a lot of sections like estate planning and a lot of others we'll get to later. Um, you, as you navigate the, explo the question menu, you, if you see a question that you want to answer, you double click, you have two options, record now or save it to later. Saving it to later is like a shopping cart. If you record now, you double click and you talk to your device which it has to, you have to have audio and camera capability. So you, we jokingly call it pants optional because you can do it from home anywhere you want. Um, but you just basically sit and talk to your camera like a video diary, like a FaceTime or Google Hangout. And you just press record and then when you're done, if you want to do it over, you can do it over, which a lot of people do. And then you can press save and it saves in a video file that you have that clearly organizes all your questions that you've answered based on the question, based on the date, based on how long it is. And you can email, if you create a video, you can email it directly from the site without external email. So it's just one or two checks and you can send the email right away. And we're noticing early that some people love to make videos and keep them private, knowing that it's just kind of mental health therapy for them to record videos and talk about themselves. Some of them know that posthumously they'll be shared and there's a solace in that as well. And also, some people love to share them right away. My mom creates maybe 10 a week. She probably shares five with me. I don't know what she does with the other five, but I know that she loves to share them, and I show them to my kids, and I share them with my brother, and it's, it's an important bonding experience for our family. So I think I'm going to have the answer ready to this question, but I sort of wanted to ask, you know, how does this differ from someone just taking their smartphone and just recording a video and sending it to their family? Great, great question. Um, anybody can do that. Um, you can do that with your smartphone, you can do that anywhere you want. Basically, we wanted a systematized and coherent place and a safe place for people to do it. Um, if you do it on your phone, you might lose your phone, you might or might not save it on the cloud. And also, what one of the primary objectives is questions and prompts. So as you answer a question, it shows you what question you're answering. So you can record it on your phone, but I don't know necessarily what you're talking about. Um, so even if you email a question from the site, it still tells you what question you're answering. And so a big part of that is we want to learn through prompts. We want to learn about people the easiest way we can. I think that's through questions. And it's, it's really hard to ask someone, what's your life story? There's really no way to start. Um, my dad had a great joke that was like, I was born at a very young age. Um, but I think that questions help bring something out of people. So I think you've answered my next question, which was what gave you the idea to create the whole thing. Um, so how have people who've used it reacted to it? What are you hearing from folks? Um, should I answer the first one first? Yeah, sure. Um, long story short, um, my father died about five years ago, and he was kind of the best guy I knew. He was a hero in my life. And we the only videos we have of him were mowing a lawn, cutting a, you know, cutting a turkey, nothing substantial about who he was as a person, nor any of his great stories. And he was a fantastic storyteller. Now I have two young kids knowing that all the only way that they'll know about my father is through these photos that are static or the diluted storytelling that I have. Um, and I'm a pretty poor storyteller. So I wanted to create something better for other people to use. Um, so that's, that's part of it. Um, also, I'm a first-generation American. So 
we don't have stories of most of my family from before the wars. So most people, I, I truly believe that everyone has a story and we wanted to find a way to do that. Originally, I had a production company where we went in and filmed people in their houses. Mm -hmm. It lasted for a very short while, mainly because we, re we I killed it pretty quickly, basically because it didn't scale in any way. You're only filming one person at one moment in time, and it really, to market, we would have had to market to affluent people. I had major ethical issues with that because I truly do believe that everyone has a story to tell, so I wanted to create some type of tool or platform that everybody can access that's affordable. Um, and you had a second question. Well, I said how people reacted to oh, it. Oh, how, Before yes, that, yes. What you mean by affordable? Affordable. Um, so far, and this is based on interviews with a lot of senior living residents, because as I lead storytelling, I kind of use them as informal focus groups too. Um, it was supposed to be a subscription economy or a subscription market. Basically, the goal was two cups of coffee a month and you can tell your life story. So right, we think it will either be around $5 a month or just annual fees, about $50 a year. We'll have family plans. And the bigger goal is to market this as the next best gift. So I would get it from my mom or people would buy it. So instead of some crappy gift or flowers that die in 20 minutes, for all the holidays that come up for birthdays, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, Christmas, um, you name the holiday, we think that the gift of storytelling really is one of the best things you can give. I can imagine a lot of seniors who I know who are very outspoken would love to do this, but I also know some reticent people who wouldn't want to do this at all. What are you finding along those lines? That's 100% true. Um, there are some people that are very outspoken and there are some and who just salivate at the chance to be able to talk and talk and talk. Um, the people who are more quiet, it takes them, they're not so worried about the technophobia. They have to get used to talking and almost looking at themselves on camera there's a privacy element about it that's different. So if you're home and you turn on your device and you're talking to yourself, it's really just you. You have nobody to worry about. You're not worried about an audience. You're not worried about being interviewed and this being projected on YouTube or anywhere. So those typical gates and fences for being observed are different and they're, they're basically removed in, from the website so that people who are typically reticent just get more comfortable pretty quickly. Five minutes. Um, can people share these videos with social media? Not yet. We're an early stage startup, so we're trying to make sure that everything we do, we do carefully. Uh, in the next few months, that's the goal, that you can share it to, social, to Facebook or Instagram. Not everybody will, so it will be optional. Um, we think that a lot of people will also keep videos private, but it's something that we want to focus on the product first before we get there. You raised earlier the idea that this could be a legacy, that when people die, posthumously, people would get to see these videos. Is that part of the system? Is it worked out that way so that people own the rights to get inside? Um, we're early stage and fortunately nobody's passed away yet who are some of our early adopters. The goal is in your account, as you create an account, you'll have you'll list people who are, let's say, your trusted people or your beneficiaries. So my mom would list my brother and I, for, for example, where we will be able to access my mom's videos after she passes. We're also working with an estate planner who's helping build us an estate planning section for things like gifting, future wishes, end of life planning. So we'll be marketing this to estate planners throughout the country as well. So they'll have access with a password and everything's safe. Um, one thing I do also want to mention is uh, people don't really, people always ask me what happens with the videos. So the videos in the next few months, you'll be able to download them. So what's really important is we want people to be own, to own their own stories. It does, shouldn't belong to the company, it should belong to the families. So they'll be able to download them in perpetuity. It's their content. So that's something that we... Sounds great. Now you're an entrepreneur, so presumably there's some making a living out of this. That's the idea behind it. So where does where the money come from? Yeah. Um, did my wife call you this morning? Um, it's self-funded right now. Um, I have side hustle gigs. I do, I'm a former lawyer, so I do legal research on the side. I lead storytelling, which is a paid consultant job. Um, my family and I are basically running the company right now. I mean, fu funded, angel funded. Um, and we will start implementing a pay structure in the next few months. We just want to make sure we get things right before we start charging people. As the CEO, I'm taking the customer service calls. My name's on the website. Um, so I want to make sure that people are talking to me and I'm getting the things right before we start charging. And how big do you think the market is for something like this? 
Earth. Um, <laughs> uh, I do think it's we're t we're focusing on the older market first. The longevity economy first. I think it's a family-based product. I don't really have a number for you. Um, I do know that one of the goals in the next few months is to translate it to different languages so people of all cultures and backgrounds can access it. Um, we have an early stage partnership with a Japanese nonprofit in Los Angeles that deals with, that basically centers itself around seniors, Japanese seniors. So we're trying to make sure that people of all backgrounds can have their native language there. Um, we think that will help scale. It's also something that I think in the way that I think about it, not, I'm not Mark Zuckerberg, but Mark Zuckerberg built Facebook for, you had to have a harvard.edu address, and then it concentrically circled outward to, now grandparents use it. So this is the inverse path of that. I'm building it for grandparents, knowing that eventually their five-year-old grandkids will be able to send them questions. So one thing we're, at, one thing we're building is a customization section. Mm -hmm. So let's say I want to ask my mom a question that's not on the website. I can write in a specific question, email her a list of questions, and she can answer them. So we think that will help with scalability and bringing, bringing an intergenerational element to it. It sounds like a great product. I wish you lots of success, and thank you for joining us today. Thanks.